Well, uh, we continue to analyze the impact of demonetization on the economy and on corporate earnings. And we have uh, uh, the top team from Deutsche Bank. Uh, uh, as we know, and we've widely publicized, they have cut their Sin6 target. But uh, we've got the author of uh, that cut, Abhay Lajawala, head of India Research at Deutsche Equities, and Kaushik Das, India Economist at Deutsche Bank, have joined in. Uh, gentlemen, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. Well, let me start with the macro and the number we do not know yet, the GDP number. Uh, Kaushik, uh, how have you changed your macro estimates, both growth and inflation? So, you know, I mean, obviously substantial amount of risks have arisen as far as growth is concerned. If you see today's newspaper, government is saying about 5.3% growth possible in October, December. If you extrapolate that into January, March as well, uh, possibly then you could end up with 6, 6.5% growth handle for this year. Our estimate is 7.5% for this year. Uh, next year is about 7.5%. I think this year the growth risk is much more. We were already conservative about growth estimates next year. Consensus was about 8%. We are at 7.5%. So possibly there could be further downside risk to that. Uh, I'd like to make a broader point that <coughs> output gap probably would be 1, 1.5% uh, at today's rate. Mm -hmm. And the second point that I'd like to make is that you know when you do economic policy making, there are always trade-offs. So possibly we are paying a price for getting you know more transparency. And that is playing through in this quarter and next quarter. But if you consider it from a long-term point of view, uh, this makes the India long-term growth story even more credible. Okay, gentlemen, good morning. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Abhay, uh, what was interesting was that even before this demonetization, I remember you were cautious on the market. Uh, in, in our last show, you had spoken about it. Uh, and you've further cut down your Sensex targets now. Uh, uh, do you think uh, this 25,000, I mean, w what's, what's your broad genesis for this, uh, this call? And do you think we can get lower as well? So uh, one of the key reasons for cutting the uh, Sensex target um, is the global macro situation. It's less the demonetization. The demonetization is going to have a near to medium term impact. So uh, the, the real reason for cutting the Sensex target has been the worry over the global macro situation. So as we have been highlighting consistently since July and August, that uh, macro uncertainties are increasing. And we were very concerned that uh, we were reaching the end of the road on global monetary policy. Monetary policies globally, as I have been highlighting consistently, have rather become ineffective. So clearly, we are going to see a transition from monetary policy to fiscal policy. Are the global markets prepared for that transition from monetary to fiscal? No. Therefore, the transition is going to be rocky. <coughs> so therefore, the key reason for cutting the target is the concerns over global macro and the uncertainties that emanate from both President-elect Trump's um, uh, US dollar and dollar positive policies, US growth positive policies, and of course, the Fed turning less hawkish. Okay, well, uh, first of all, you must say two thumbs up to you because you were the only one standing at the other end of the spectrum. There were nine bulls at that time and you were the sole bear and you called the market top, right? But um, what do you see now as the impact of demonetization? Because at that time, I remember your only worry was global, largely global. Yes. No one saw this coming, right? Now that this has come through, what do you think the impact could be on earnings growth? And would you revise your earnings estimates downwards for various sectors? If yes, which ones are you most cautious on? Sure. So our research team has done uh, an extensive analysis uh, on Friday uh, and they've looked at uh, all the sectors threadbare, they've looked at near-term impact, medium-term impact, uh, one-year impact and uh, sectors that are obviously linked to the cash economy, sectors that are reliant on discretionary consumption, those sectors are going to be impacted in the near to medium term. So for example, uh, in consumer discretionary, our analysts have slashed estimates from about 4% to almost 21%. Okay. Jewelry companies, for example, have seen a slash of as much as 20 to 21%. Auto companies, we've seen a slash between 4 and 14% to our estimates. And this is more for FY17 and uh, less so for FY18. Uh, real estate, for example, has seen uh, big, big cuts. Consumer staples has seen relatively lower cuts. And a sector that is standing out is public sector banks, where our banks analyst uh, Manish Karva has actually raised earnings estimates. 
Okay. So earnings estimates for uh, SBI for for certain public sector banks mm -hmm. have actually been raised, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is very contrary to the rest of the sector. And on a Sensex mm -hmm. basis, our year-on-year -year growth for e uh, Sensex EPS now is about 10%. Okay. Uh, for FY17 uh, against 16% a uh, couple of months ago. Well, uh, public sector banks are obviously a proxy of the macros. So, Kaushik, what have you been telling them? Are you ex how much are you expecting in terms of an inflation curve in FY18? What is the uh, uh, rate cut action you are expecting? What is the fiscal action you're expecting? Is this a massive fiscal expansion uh, because you get some big uh, uh, dividend from uh, Reserve Bank? Your macros for calendar 18. So rates, it's very easy to answer. I mean, you can use three words, lower for longer. So okay. uh, we expect, uh, you know, a 25 basis points rate cut mm -hmm. uh, in December. Possibly that could be even 50 basis points if RBI wants to be preemptive. From your question about inflation, our FY18 inflation uh, forecast average CPI was about 5%. This demonetization could potentially uh, lead to 50 basis points uh, downside risk to inflation. So if you just do the mathematics that if you have 4.5% average inflation, if you apply 1% or you know, real interest rate on top of that, you could potentially come down to 5.5% on the uh, repo rate mm. so possibly you know today you are at uh, you know 625 so you could come down to 550 by you know uh, mid next year mm. so i guess bond markets have already priced in that uh, bond markets are Sorry. pricing in almost 50 basis points rate cut uh, now on fiscal the question that you asked uh, i think our view is a little different we think next year's fiscal deficit target would be met at would be kept at three and a half percent of gdp uh, we don't think it will be brought down to three because even if the government gets a lot of uh, extra resources, either from non-tax or tax, they'll probably use it to you know, ramp up public spending, which is required to support growth, and possibly some you know, relief on the income tax front. So we think that 3% target that was there as a plan for next year would be pushed into FY19. So 3.5% for next year on fiscal, but bond markets would be possibly you know, looking into the fact that there could be more rate cuts coming. So what stocks to buy is the next question we'll be asking you, but we have to take a break. Back in a jiffy. Welcome back. We are talking to the top team of uh, Deutsche Bank and Deutsche Equities. Uh, uh, Abheb, uh, you know, we spoke about the fact that you've downgraded the, the Sensex target. Uh, but what's interesting is, looking at your portfolio strategy, you're downgrading financials, which has been the big leg of this market rally, and you're upgrading the two underperforming sectors, healthcare and IT services. That's right. So in financial services, uh, the downgrade is coming primarily on account of uh, NBFCs 
but uh, we are positive on the PSU banks. So therefore, we are overweight banks, but underweight financial institutions. Uh, as far as IT services is concerned, uh, indeed, we have uh, moved the sector to an overweight uh, after a very long gap. In fact, for almost all of this year, we have been underweight IT services. We raised it to a neutral a month ago and we raised it to an overweight, uh, 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 overweight on Monday. And the basis, the rationale for this uh, overweight uh, on IT is attributed to a steepening yield curve in global financial markets. Remember, the yield curve being flat, negative interest rates, all of this has hurt the banks the most. Mm -hmm. As the yield curve steepens, you will probably see the global banking and financial sector report better earnings. In addition, President-elect Trump's policies also talk of, lower de of less regulation. And therefore, the terms of trade may probably be shifting in favor of the banking and financial services sector. So IT discretionary spending, mm -hmm. which has been held back on account of the BFSI sector globally being in a tough position, will incrementally start to see, uh, you know, some of the held back orders begin to come back. And remember, BFSI constitutes 40% of the IT sector's earnings. So what, from a market's point of view, what do you see as the uh, something that could change the sour sentiment post-demonetization? Because there's so much talk of a big fiscal stimulus, perhaps, you know, uh, a petrol price cut, excise duty cut, etc., uh, and interest rate cuts expected. You think any of that could change the sentiment? I think you answered the question, right? <laughs> um, so, so we also think that, uh, you know, despite whatever is happening in India, the policy bias of the government remains growth positive. To us as analysts, and this is a message to all our investors, is that watch this. The policy bias of the government of India stays growth positive. So we do believe that therefore this stick approach at this point in time will be followed with a carrot approach. Now, how that is articulated, we will have to wait and see. Does it come outside the budget? Does it come in the budget? But yes, it could take the form of increased public spending. It could take the form of tax cuts. It could take the form of more social inclusion. Whichever way, we do believe that this, this will be approached with measures to stimulate and boost the economy. Okay. Kaushik has already spoken about uh, credit policy and the prospects for interest rates. That obviously will be one thing. Mm -hmm. A final question for us dummies. Uh, so what is the bottom of the market and what is the top in a, <laughs> in a 10 month, a ten, in, a, in a 12 month frame, 24 month frame? Ah, that is, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, Lata, you've, you've been looking at markets for uh, as long as I have, and you will agree that uh, there, is, there is no point in hazarding those guesses. All I will say is that in the near term, markets are expected to remain volatile with a downward bias. All right. Okay. Well, on that note, on that open note, uh, Kaushik and uh, Abhay, thank you very much for dropping in and making this conversation so energetic.